Allison had uh, a space open, Hello. Mm -hmm. uh, an opportunity for, for a show, and I've been doing a lot of graphite on paper, and uh, we wanted a second person in the show, and I'd seen Aaron's work at Habit and at Pico, is that right? Pico, yep, yeah. Pico. And I, I, I love his work, and I actually knew Aaron from uh, Metropole. He's a printer. Um, we've had a lot of work done there. So we started talking about doing a, a show, and I, I wanted another person who worked in, in graphite. Uh, it's, it's not common uh, that people work in graphite anymore, or not anymore, but as a finished piece, uh, having a finished piece as a graphite drawing. Um, seems to be unusual, and Aaron's are incredibly <laughs> effective. So, I thought he'd be a a good person um, to have a show with. Although I, I feel like he's overshadowed my work. Which no, maybe a bit of a tactical error on my <laughs> part. <laughs> I think it's a good. Uh, I think I think they complement each other. Yeah. But uh, I was uh, flattered that you, that the two of you, thought of me to be in the show here and. It was a good catalyst to get uh, work produced, and uh, hopefully lots of people come see it. It's up for the whole month, so up till March 2nd. Um, one thing that I would like to know is about the title. How did you come up with that title? Of what? Well, tell me about it. Well, the, the title was, it was partly Allison, uh, who's the owner of, of Dale's Gallery. It was partly her idea. She wanted to somehow work into into the title that, that this is going to be one of the last shows that she'll do before the space is being renovated. Um, this block of uh, buildings has been bought and is is being renovated. And they actually it actually says on the sign that it's a gentrification project, which is usually a bad word. Uh, so we wanted to sort of play play with that a bit and sort of have a, have a public notice of of alterations to the block or to the building and the graphic blandishments is actually um, taken from the credits of Charlie Brown Christmas uh, every year I watch it and it goes by there's there's an actual credit uh, for graphic blandishments and I, I couldn't tell you who who is credited with doing the graphic blandishments but um, I've always liked the the, the phrase it would look good on a business card. Yeah, absolutely. Graphic blandishments and dragon sling. <laughs> Mark maker. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was uh, the fact that uh, Dale's is is here and uh, it's a beautiful space and um, you know hopefully there'll be a lot more. Art shows here, and uh, but it is it is tricky with uh, any any city with uh, turnover and and renovations. It's always uh, um, it's uh, sometimes uh, unfair. <laughs> but what 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 is fair? What's unfair? But uh, um, it's nice to be here for this month. We'll see what the future holds. This is your first time showing at Dale's? Or? Yep, it's my first time showing at Dale's and I've always admired it uh, as a space in Victoria and um, so yeah, it's an honor. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the pieces that you put in the show? Yeah, I was, I was kind of uh, motivated to create create these works um, in the past month just w finding out that there would be a, uh, that there would be a show here I kind of um, had a few preliminary sketches that I developed into finished illustrations and kind of playing on the theme of uh, of uh, land use and and home and uh, turning over of of uh, soil with developments for buildings and uh, the coming and going of structures um, and kind of rooted in uh, the neighborhood I live in in James Bay 
and being inspired by uh, Emily Carr and reading about a lot about her recently and studying her um, kind of led me to create the works that are up here. So you will say that you, uh, your art kind of has a social commentary sometimes or always? Or? Uh, well, I hope that, you know, people pull their own meaning from the work. I like leaving a certain uh, ambiguity in, in what I'm drawing or painting. But, uh, but yes, drawing landscapes and... Uh, structures uh, it's I want it to be left open to to your own interpretation so you got to come down and see it yourself but uh, there's there's always uh, motivations behind why I'm drawing them but uh, uh, sometimes it's best best left unsaid so, um <laughs> which is terrible for an interview, but, uh, but uh, yeah. yeah. I know where you're coming from, yeah. It's, um, I think, uh, sometimes as artists, we create a vocabulary that only we understand, and the, it happens organically, because we, we go down a road, and the next logical step is the next logical step, and, and what you do mm. is obvious to you. But to teach somebody the vocabulary of the language that you've learned over a long period of time is, is very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I like the feeling, and I think this happens in, in almost every artist's work, I, I love the feeling of, of sort of putting your viewer into a place that they've never been before. So they have to discover the, the neighborhood and they have to discover the ways that the culture works within the language that you've created. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I have a, f I'm pretty sure that that's happening in my work because sometimes I don't understand the vocabulary. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, just, just building on that from piece to piece, you end up in a place where you, you could never have imagined. Mm -hmm. And each, spe and as you work, one piece might influence mm -hmm. another drawing you're working on. And when you work on them as a group, they influence each other. Absolutely. Um, how they come to their finished state. So uh, sometimes you can't really plan for that. Mm -hmm. But it, and like I was saying earlier, it's just having a deadline, having a, mm -hmm. a reason to ec to get it to that final step, um, is sometimes the biggest challenge to have to take things from a sketchbook or from just your your ideas from a notebook uh, and bringing them to that finished state is uh, it's hard to explain sometimes but uh, deadlines are are very effective so what do you hear it? Have you, what do you say about the pieces that you have for the show here um, well I'm it's, it's funny Aaron's influenced by Emily Carr whose work I love um, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm fascinated by the Italian Renaissance, uh, actually a German Renaissance, the Renaissance. Um, and I, I, I feel like I'm trying to stand on the shoulders of giants. I'm trying to sort of use what they did as an influence in my work. Um, often it's, it's complete fantasy. Um, sometimes I actually use compositions that I've, stolen from Renaissance paintings or actual, you know, I built on top of, of Renaissance paintings and drawings. Uh, there's one piece in the show that's um, sort of riffing on the anatomical work that was done um, and almost lost, apparently. Um, and again, a lot of that was, was based on science, but actually based on fantasy as well. Um, and then there was, uh, there's also a series that I was working on which was um, to do with devotional uh, paintings or devotional pieces, the, the sort of altar pieces that, that were happening. Um, but I based the composition on um, fights that take place in, in places of government. So the one that's in the show 
um, is actually a fight that happened in uh, South Korea, I believe, and it's you know fighting politicians. So I used the the heads to to kind of dictate where the figures were going to fall in the space, and then there's a, an angel in the in the the piece as well, which is not in the original composition, not in the original photograph, but it's um, my idea is that um, that. Um, it's humanity's aspiration to the divine, but their failure because they're too busy fighting or, or fussing about um, about things that are not divine. So um, that's uh, it's a small bit of what I'm doing, I guess. But it's okay. it. Sorry, the sculptures too that you have. The sculptures. Compliment. Yeah, I, I I'm again I I love the the little theoretical inventions or the, that, that Da Vinci did. There's all these sketches. Well, everybody knows about the sketches of the, you know, the, the helicopter and the, the war machines. And some of them would have worked. Um, they've, they've apparently, you know, they've, they've done these experiments where they've tried to build them and see if they actually will, will function. Most of them wouldn't, but, mm. um, so in my machines, I, I like to kind of play with the idea that just the the very simplest of actions is it has to be brought about by by very complex means. Um, but when I build my machines, they're incredibly simple, so they seem complex, but they're actually simple. So I'm not sure if that means anything. But the I, I I'm kind of interested in the the fantasy aspect of engineering and the fact that we've gone so far one way that it's impossible to solve problems simply anymore. It has to be done by complex means, whereas what I'm trying to do is solve complex problems simply. Um, by doing that, I, I wouldn't trust these machines to be reliable or I wouldn't want to you know, drive one down the highway or anything, but, mm -hmm. but it's, um, it's, they're just, it's just an exercise. That's and they're fun. Mm -hmm. Puppets. <laughs>